I told you this is a wild card. Now, service accommodation is high risk. It's not as high risk for me personally as a BRRR because a lot can go wrong in a BRRR. And while service accommodation is high effort, right? It is, because especially if you're managing it yourself, you're managing bookings, pools, all that kind of stuff. Doing a refurb, for me, is a lot more effort. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Warren, I am a banker here in London, and an investor across the UK in property. My goal is to live free and independently, so I'm looking for an income of 3,000 pounds per month from property, if that's what you want to, like and subscribe. Guys, I've really enjoyed making this series of videos of how to get started in property with a fixed amount of money. I've done 10,000 pounds, I've done 20,000 pounds. That one was really popular actually, over a thousand views now. So watch that one if you wanna know how to get started in property with 20,000 pounds. Today, I'm going up again, and this time I've got 30,000 pounds. And with a twist, guys, I'm gonna rank these strategies in terms of cost and effort with this heat map here. The red section is a higher effort and a higher cost. The green section is a lower effort and a lower cost. And I'm gonna rank them to give you a more detailed and specific view of what each strategy takes to get started in property. So let's not waste any time and get straight into it. So first up, we've got 30,000 pounds. We're talking about how to get started in UK property. That's a good size of money. I talk a lot about joint ventures and my first strategy is doing a joint venture on a HMO property. Now, a HMO property is a house of multiple occupation. And the government definition of a house of multiple occupation is one whereby you have three tenants or more living in one house, forming one household, and you will share a toilet, bathroom, or kitchen with your other tenants. It's basically what we know as a flat share, those types of properties that you'll see on spare room, etc. And you're classed by the government as a large HMO, super size me, if there are five or more of you forming one household, and again, sharing toilet, bathroom, kitchen and other facilities with the other tenants. So that's the definition of a HMO. So to get started with 30,000 pounds, this first option is a joint venture. So joining up with somebody else who you can trust, who you've vetted, all of that good stuff, who's also bringing 30,000 pounds to the table. So you've got 60,000 pounds to use in total, okay? Now the pros of doing a HMO, say you've got you know a free bedroom house and you're renting out each room to a tenant, an individual tenant, rather than a free bedroom house to a family, is that you can maximize your income by renting out by the room instead of the whole house. You can quite easily double, triple your income by doing that. And one thing to remember is that when you're doing a HMO, you really do have to check what the council's rules and regulations are because they do vary from council to council across the UK. So check those and make sure you're aligned. Now, in terms of getting started with that 30K and doubling it up with another joint venture partner and having 60K, what are the costs of that gonna be? So let's go through them. First of all, I would say that you're gonna need at least 15,000 pounds to refurb a house that you buy and make it into a viable HMO. So you're gonna to have to spend money on things like fireproofing doors throughout because the fire safety laws when it comes to HMOs are very stringent and you're gonna to have to spend money on that. Fire alarm systems throughout the house, fresh kitchen and a bathroom, en suite, you might have to put in an extra bathroom, toilet, shower, when it comes to tenants sharing a house, you probably have to kit it out with white goods, so stuff like fridges, freezers, microwaves, ovens, washing machines, dryers, all of that is kind of standard these days when it comes to HMOs. So I would set aside at least 15,000 pounds for that. I would say legal and broker fees would come to round about 2,500 pounds. Your deposit, now I'm looking at buying 150,000 pound three or four bed house up north i'm confident that 150,000 pounds would get you that and we'll look at some areas in a second so 25 percent deposit 37 and a half thousand pounds and then stamp duty at five thousand pounds on a property at that price point so that's just under sixty thousand pounds in total that's where your money's gonna go okay now let's have a quick look at what you could get up north for £150,000. Now this is just really back of a fag packet stuff in terms of getting started with £30,000 in property. But I just wanna give you an idea of what there is up north. I invest up north and I go up there for a reason. So let's take a look at Liverpool. Now I have got some filters here. I've said maximum price of 150, maximum four bed. Property type, I'm gonna look for terraced houses. Don't want no flats. 
don't want land, park homes. I don't even know what park home is. And yeah, those are the main filters. So Liverpool, I've chosen Liverpool because it is a great, great city. Um, I've done previous videos on why investing in Liverpool is a really good idea. So check those out on my channel. And I'm just looking at the spread of the properties around Liverpool. Liverpool is a big place. I'd be looking as close to the city centre as possible, which is here. I mean, around, I know Liverpool really well, so I know that around the city centre, when it comes to Liverpool, is predominantly flat. Terraced houses around this city centre area are really few and far between. But let's have a quick look at what's available kind of close-ish to the city centre. So here we go, four bedroom terraced house in Kensington. Now Kensington is a mixed bag, so it depends where in Kensington you are. But again, this is just giving you a rough idea of what there is. So you can get a four bedroom terraced house. Let's have a look at the floor space. 547 square feet, total floor area. That is quite small, I'm not gonna lie, for a four bed house. 547 square feet for a four bed, interesting. So that's one in Kensington. Let's go back, still in Kensington. Four bed, 139,000. Let's open up a few tabs, 135,000. Let's go a bit further out. So we're towards Everton now. That is an auction. So I'm not really interested in auctions. Four bed, 145,000. So yeah, let, let's just have a quick look at these, right? So the main idea of just opening up these tabs and just having a quick look is to show you that four beds basically are achievable in Liverpool. And Liverpool is still underpriced in my humble opinion, okay? it's a good time to be getting in there. So this is in good condition. So it's a bit bigger, 885 square foot. That's what I'm talking about. Lounge and dining room. So this is actually a free bed, but what you could do is just convert either a lounge or dining room into a bedroom. Maybe put in an extra bathroom because that's quite large down there. And there you go, you've got a four bed HMO. So that's 139, 140,000 basically. No floor pan for this one. Quick look at the photos. Again, decent condition. Oh yeah, that's like a new bathroom. Yeah, good condition, 135,000. Ah, this is by online auction. So it'll probably go for higher than that. Again, online auction for this one. Online auction for this one as well. So this is the only one that's not, let me just go back and double check. Yeah, not an online auction. So that's Liverpool for you. Let's have a look in Crewe. I know that Crewe is a commuter city. It's close if we zoom out to, it, it's a stopping off point, right, on the trains. And it's really not far from Liverpool, from Manchester, from Stoke-on-Trent, from Sheffield, uh, less than two hours. So not a bad place to buy a HMO. This is by public auction, so I'm not interested in auctions. Larger family, there you go, 140,000. Let's have a look at that one. Public caution, not interested in that. Shared ownership. So at this moment in time, there's one in crew. Usually there's more, but hey ho. Let's have a look at the size of this. I don't have the square footage or square meterage, that's okay, but let's just have a look at the floor plan. So this genuinely does have four bedrooms on the top floor. They got a living room and a dining room on the bottom floor. So you could actually convert one of these into an extra bedroom and actually have a five bed HMO. Also get a bathroom in there as well. They've got a utility, which is very handy as well. Have a quick look at some of these photos. Yeah, again, it looks in good condition. Kitchen's a bit dated, but that's not the end of the world. You know, you can work with that. So that's a really quick whistle tour example of what's available, what you can get with £150,000. It is possible to get three, four bed up north for that in a decent city. And then when we come on to profits, right, if we say you can get a mortgage at around about 5%, because um, that's kind of like the prevailing interest rate at this moment in time, at 75% LTV, your mortgage is gonna be around about 470 pounds per month. Your rent, I would say that in those cities, in Liverpool higher, but let's just say about 400 pounds per room. That's 1,600 pounds per month in income. I would say your costs per month would be around about 700 per month. Again, these are rough costs, so don't come at me in the comments say, oh no, it's much. I know that, but I'm just giving rough costs, okay? So you've got uh, income of 1,600 pounds per month, your mortgage interest, 470 pounds per month. And then when you add other costs to that, like the costs of utilities, um, internet, Netflix, repairs, etc., etc. Total cost per month around about £700 per month. I know it varies. I know different parts of the UK, different types of houses it could be much higher, could be lower. Just an average, guys, just a rough idea. I think you can get a profit around about £900 per month out of 
a four bed HMO. And you're doing a joint venture, so divide that by two, 450 pounds each per month off of a jointly owned HMO. Not bad, okay? So that was my first option in terms of getting started in UK property with 30,000 pounds. Let's look at another option. You could buy a uh, 100,000 pound two, three bed yourself, okay? I'm not talking about joint ventures anymore. I'm talking about doing it yourself in an affordable area still. So I think you could get a two, three bed in Greater Manchester, not Central Manchester, the city of Manchester itself, and um, prices have risen too much for that, but Greater Manchester, you know, places like Bolton, etc., etc., in Liverpool as well, and also again, Crew. Um, your deposit at 25% would be £25,000. Stamp duty, £3,000. Legal and broker fees, 2500 again. That's £30,000, okay? So now you're doing it yourself. You're all in, you're doing it on your own, £30,000. Um, with a mortgage at 5% at 75% LTV, around about £312 per month. And your rent will be around about £650 on a free bed in those cities on average. And let's have a quick look again at what you could get in those cities. So you notice that I've put on two beds this time. I'm gonna look for large two beds, two bed houses, um, where you can potentially convert to a three bed. So let's have a look in Bolton. So I mentioned Bolton, 60,000. Wow, is that an auction? That's a leasehold, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, trying to avoid auction properties. Two bed there, modern method of auction, let's avoid that. No, chain. Okay, that's promising. Again, I'm just choosing at random. This is a really quick example. So let's have a look at this one, okay? Two bed leasehold. Let's have a look at the floor plan, lounge dining. That's a really big lounge dining room. Now, I think you could split this into, uh, maybe you could put a stud wall in there and create a bedroom on the lower floor. So now you've got a three bed house and you've still got a lounge dining room to work with. Okay, let's have a look at this other one. This is a leasehold, not the end of the world. Again, you've got a lounge and a dining room, two bedrooms upstairs. Convert one of these into a bedroom. Now you've got a three bed terraced house. And then this third one, again, let's have a look at this. Well, you've got a loft, so you can convert that. Again, lounge, kitchen, diner. At the bottom, convert one of those into a bedroom. And you know, if you have the money at some stage, you can convert the loft and make that into a four bed, but you bought it for £100,000. So what do we do with this property? I personally would rent out, I'm being creative here, I'd rent it out as a family home this time instead of a HMO, okay, just a standard family home on a single AST. I reckon the rent on a free bed, around about £650 per month, okay? Now when you deduct your mortgage costs of £312 per month, you know, around about £340 profit, per month okay over the course of a year that's you know net profit four thousand pounds i would do that run it out as a family home for two years save up the eight thousand pounds then use the eight thousand pounds to do a refurb so put in an extra room if you can and then at that stage once you've done the refurb after two years start renting it out as a hmo and in terms of how i'd rate this strategy when it comes to hmos Okay, HMOs are higher cost and they are higher effort. So I would put a HMO up here, right, in the red zone because the effort is you're managing basically multiple tenants, individual tenants. You've got four different tenants in one house, but it's like having four houses with individual tenants. Um, it, it can be intensive, especially depending on the dynamic between the tenants, right? I've got friends who've lived in HMOs with problem tenants and the drama that happens in HMOs, right? Where there's not a good mix. And I just put myself in the landlord's position. I'd be like, wow, imagine managing that day to day, week to week, month to month, okay? Really important to pick the right blend of tenants, you know, tenants with the same sort of interests, same kind of age categories, right? Okay, same kind of temperaments or temperaments that would harmonize together. You wanna think about that stuff when choosing tenants. And then higher cost, yeah, mainly because, right, um, the, the maintenance of a HMO 
is higher. More things go wrong when you have more tenants in the house, okay, doing different things. So that's why I put that one there. So when we're talking about profit, okay, from a HMO, once you've converted it into a free bed, I reckon again, you know, 400 pounds per room, round about, 1,200 pounds per month. Your costs combined, again, I'd say around about 700 pounds per month, okay? So you can make a profit around about 500 pounds per month and you're doing this on your own, okay? So as you can see, initially renting it out as a two bed family house, profit around about 340 per month. Once you convert it to a HMO after two years, you can bump up that profit to 500 pounds, around about 500 pounds per month. And like I said, I'm being creative with these strategies and my goal is to maximize the income from these. So that's what I would do, okay? With 30,000 pounds of getting started in property when it comes to this particular option. In terms of risk, it's the same. I'll put it exactly the same place as the last one. It's still a HMO, just one less tenant. Then our strategy that I would use if I was to spend 30,000 pounds to get started in UK property, I'm gonna go for a joint venture once again. And I'm gonna go all out, guys, in terms of sexy strategies. Let's do a BRRR, that's buy, refurbish, refinance, rent it out, okay? I did a BRRR in Manchester just under two years ago. I bought a two bed terraced house at auction, just adding in complexity and difficulty to the whole thing. But this was the most complex thing I've done in property. Bought a two bed terraced house at auction, then I refurbed it, did a BRRRR. I released just under 25,000 pounds in equity. And that is the big payoff from doing BRRR. You release equity, big chunks of equity in a short time frame. So I bought it for 127,000 at auction and I refurbed it, raised its value to 160,000. All in, in terms of what I spent to buy it at auction was 69 thousand pounds okay seven thousand six hundred pounds of which was auction fees when you buy an auction you pay um quite chunky fees all right especially on online auctions okay and also add to that so seven thousand six hundred and then another four thousand pounds um was all together in bridging interest and fees bridging costs you know they are pricey so of that sixty nine thousand pounds just under twelve thousand pounds was auction fees and bridging costs. Now, if I did that again, okay, instead of an auction, I would try to source a property direct from vendor. Now, this is a strategy that I'm not gonna go into here, but more experienced, sophisticated landlords, real property people, people are running property as a business, um, use this strategy. Why? Because you can often get properties for much lower than the market price if you're sourcing them direct from vendors, okay? And you can source them in different ways. You can actually go, you can literally go direct to vendors through different ways like online marketing, letters, via estate agent relationships. There's different ways to do it. So if I did it again, I'd try that out, okay? You've got nothing to lose. And I would effectively, if I can do that, remove all of those auction costs, okay? Of just under 8,000 pounds. Would still need bridging, but would lower the cost all in. So you take away that just under 8,000 pounds. We're now at 61,000 pounds. And between two people, that's 30,000 pounds each, 40,500, okay? I'm assuming you can get the 500 pounds from somewhere. And of course I bought in Manchester, okay? So I would look in a city with a lower price point. I don't have to get a terraced house in Manchester. I'll go to still a good city, but where the properties are less expensive. I think you could easily get a two bed for a lower price point. In a high growth city in the UK, what are the high growth cities in the UK? I like to use data. Let's look at the Zoopla house price index. So obviously Zoopla has a huge range of data based on a huge sample size across the UK. So in terms of annual house price changes, I would go somewhere like Sheffield. Sheffield is a great city I already own in Sheffield and it's still relatively cheap. I said earlier I'd go in Greater Manchester, I'd go in Liverpool, and even Leeds, because Leeds is still pretty affordable, despite it being a really great city. To be fair, it's massively underpriced in my opinion, but I'm sure it's time will come soon. So you can go to a city with a lower price point, and you might even be able to lower that price from 61,000 to below that. You know, you might be able to get to maybe 56, 57,000 pounds. And I'd join forces with a partner and do a refurb, a two, three bed terraced house. By the way, that 69,000 original number that I gave when I talked about buying my property in Manchester at auction that I refurb, that includes the actual cost of the refurb, right? So when I talk about going direct to vendor, 
reducing that to 61,000 pounds, looking in a cheaper city, reducing that to like 56, 57,000 pounds. That includes a refurb, okay? And you know, you do a refurb and with the right property, you could quite easily pull out, you know, 20,000 pounds upwards doing a BRRRR as a joint venture with a partner Divide that by two, you know, you're gonna get at least 10,000 pounds back out, okay? So you've really spent 20,000 pounds and then you retain that property and rent it out thereafter. So that is a high risk, high effort, high cost strategy. It's high cost because you're paying for a refurb, a significant refurb in you know, amongst that. You're buying a bigger house, usually a two, three bed, right? And it's higher effort because, you know, from personal experience, I was up and down Manchester from London to Manchester several times right to check on the progress of the refurb interviewing builders right at the start going and doing the snagging at the end going back there when it was all done to meet you know letting agents and getting them you know looking around the house doing an appraisal you're there and back okay and you've got to be on point with builders I've done a whole series of videos about my refurb and the need to choose good builders and to be really close to them throughout the refurbishment project, okay? It's the highest cost, highest effort, but it is the highest reward in terms of strategy. And then lastly, this strategy is the safest, most straightforward one, a one bed property, maybe even a two bed in a solid proven city. And let's look at the one beds that you can get in a city like Sheffield. I mean, you kind of spoil for choice. You've got the center of Sheffield right here. And these are most, and these are mostly going to be flats, but you can get some really good modern one bed flats in Sheffield. Look at that rental income of £700 and it's you're buying it tenanted. Actually, the tenants would have moved out. That's March 2024. £90,000, £90,000, 70. That one looks a bit pokey. 97, £500,000, 100 to £105,000. Always comes back to Liverpool. I mean, look at that. I mean, <laughs> When I say Liverpool's underpriced, I really do mean it. There's so much available in Liverpool for a really good price still, and you can just see just the tons of options that come up as soon as we got here. This is the heart of Liverpool. Again, I'll be, I'll be buying as close to the city centre as possible. But look at this, £87,000, £95,000. I'm honestly just clicking at random here. £99,000, I mean, these are all, obviously I've got the filter on, but you know, you can see from the photos here that these aren't just like cheap, pokey flats. These are modern flats in the heart of Liverpool that have been there for a, a while now, right close to the heart. Derby's another city that gets talked about, not as much as it should, but if you know, you know. I mean, there's not a lot out here, but if you could get a two bed for 100,000 in Derby, I think you're laughing. I mean, this one's going by auction, so it's gonna go, let's be fair, it's gonna go for above that. I know I said no auctions earlier on, but for a two bed in Derby, I would, you know, there's no harm in bidding. If the costs work out and the numbers work out, I mean, you can't see the insights, so you'd have to go visit it. This is one you're gonna do by yourself. When you're choosing a property for 100,000 pounds, 30,000 pounds, all in, will get you the property, okay? It will cover the deposit, stamp duty, lawyer, broker fees, etc. It's low risk, it's low effort, so it's gonna be in the green section on this diagram here. You're gonna make a profit of around about 200 to 300 pounds per month. And over time, hopefully, if you choose right, your capital appreciation is where you make the real big gains in terms of equity. Okay, now lastly guys, this is a bonus one. I said lastly before, but I mean it this time, is to set up, this is gonna be a curveball wildcard, set up a rent to rent business. Now, what is rent to rent? Rent to rent is basically a strategy for people who want to get into property, but they don't have the deposit saved, okay? So the costs of entry are lower, but at the same time, if you do it right, it's high return. In this scenario, we, we do have the price of a deposit, but instead of buying property, we're gonna do rent to rent. What is rent to rent? You approach a landlord, okay? Usually these landlords are tired landlords, they're jaded, they don't wanna be in property anymore, but they still have a property that they haven't necessarily gotten rid of yet. You approach a landlord and you say, look, I will pay you X per month. You agree an amount to pay the landlord and you say, I'll pay you this money each month, guaranteed, regardless of whether there's a tenant in there or not, for the next X years, three, five, seven, whatever the term is, you agree with the landlord. What you do is that you get the landlord's permission to use that property 
for a high income strategy like serviced accommodation, Airbnb, booking.com or a HMO as we've just discussed. Now the idea is, is that the income from service accommodation or HMO will be greater than what you're paying the landlord each month. And you agree with the landlord that they get that money, but you keep the difference. That's essentially how it works. Now I would say to get a rent to rent property up and running, all in, you're looking at around about £5,000. So that's sending mails and contacting landlords, whether it's through letters or online through um, digital, social media marketing, okay? That's getting legal agreements joined, that's getting legal agreements drawn up, you know, buying legal templates is a way to do it these days, just in terms of having a compliant, legally sound agreement with the landlord. And then there's all the stuff around getting a property set up that you have to pay for. So uh, gas safety certificates, um, electrical performance certificates, EPCs, EICRs, um, the cost of fire safety, you know, especially if you're doing a HMO, but also if you're doing a service accommodation, um, you know, fire safety is really important. And, you know, when it comes to HMOs and service accommodation, you're supplying these properties furnished. So the cost of furniture, white goods, cleaning it, staging it. £5,000, I think, is a reasonable amount to get started. Now, you've got £30,000. So I do this six times, okay? So it's £30,000 all in. I told you this is a wild card. So you've got six rent to rent properties with your thousand with your thirty thousand pounds your monthly net profits on a service accommodation you know it can be anywhere from 500 pounds per month to a thousand pounds per month but let's just be really conservative and say it's 500 pounds per month okay throughout the year really conservative and this is your profits after deducting the costs of running a, a service accommodation stuff like utilities energy wi-fi netflix cleaning it linens your payments to the landlord etc okay times that by six so you've got six of them three thousand pounds net profit per month you could potentially recover your money in that thirty thousand pounds in a year okay if all goes well you know there's a lot of factors <laughs> that need to go right for that to happen but i told you this is a wild card now service accommodation is high risk it's not as high risk for me personally, as a BRRR, because a lot can go wrong in a BRRR. And while service accommodation is high effort, right? It is, because especially if you're managing it yourself, you're managing bookings, pools, all that kind of stuff. Doing a refurb, for me, is a lot more effort than managing bookings, okay? And it's not as high cost, you know, the money in for service accommodation is not the same, especially if you're doing it on a rent to rent basis, is a lot lower, okay? than actually buying a property in any scenario. So it's in the amber area, as you can see on here. So guys, those were my options and my ratings for getting started in UK property with £30,000. This was a meaty video. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Are you tempted now to do any of these? What's your favorite strategy? Thanks as always for supporting the channel, guys. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next video.